transform plot. Before we start, I would strongly recommend if you have not seen this strip plot video, just go and watch that first and then come back over here and then start with swarm plot. That will be quite helpful. Why do we draw a swarm plot? We draw it to represent each of the data points on the plot. What does that mean? Let's say we have these data points. Like you can see, many of the numbers are repeated quite often. So how when we plot these numbers using swamp plot, it looks like this. Next question comes, why can't we do that in a strip plot then? Then we can't do it because same data points overlaps in strip plot. Let's understand that here we have the same data set, but if we draw it in a strip plot, you see this overlap. If you see, we have six occurrences for number three and here in the plot you can see all those six occurrences let's have a comparative look for the same data here we have strip plot here we have swarm plot let's see the difference for these data points like i just said we have six occurrences for the number three and if you see how these have been plotted on strip plot these are not clear but if you look at swarm plot these are very much clear Swamp plot, using swamp plot, you can draw the plots as beautiful as this. And at the same time, you can also overlay this on box plot and on violin plot. Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. And to understand the concept very clearly, please watch the video till the end. Once you are done with watching the video, please do not forget to contribute by liking, commenting, subscribing and hitting the bell icon. In On swamp plot, on Seaborn official website for swarm plot, you will see all these arguments are mentioned. Means you can pass on these all arguments. In this tutorial, we will cover those arguments which are most often used and are required. Let's jump to the Jupyter notebook and try to understand this thing in detail with practical examples. Here, we have just imported all the required libraries which are pandas, numpy, matplotlib, and seaborn and now here i am importing the same data set same data frame which i have been using in this series now we will be covering all these problem statements you can have a look on all of these let's try to follow each of them one by one here it says create a basic swamp plot on total column so in this smart data frame let me show you a sample of this data frame so here we have all these columns and the problem statement asks us to draw a swarm plot basis on this total column let's draw that how can you do that just sns dot swarm plot and here we can pass the data frame name which is mart and the total column we can just pass it on y-axis and here we would have the swarm plot created so if you notice over here all of these data points are separated and are clearly visible not overlapping to each other right so this is why we use the swarm plot most often we use such plots for small set of data Next problem statement says create swamp plot group by categories. Same thing we are going to say sns dot swamp plot data which we will use is mart and on x axis like I just okay let me put it this way first I will plot the total just like the above example. Now I want to categorize it by payment method. What are the total amounts spent on each of the payment method? So that I can plot on x axis. That I will say payment. And let's run this. Here. Previously, we had just one swamp plot which was showing the total volume of, uh, which was showing the volume of total expenditure. Now, here the same information is being provided, but that is categorized by payment methods. Let's explore it further. So, showing you separately on the categorical axis before we jump to this next problem statement let me show you another example over here 
like here we just use one categorical variable what if i want to use another categorical variable what if i want to show it basis on gender as well now i just categorize total expenditure basis on payment method what if i also want to see which gender in which payment method how much have they spent so for that i can use hue sorry please bear with me here i can just use hue argument and in that i can pass on the gender column now if you see over here it has been color differently for credit card blue points represent to female and orange one represents to the male for same goes with rest of the two payment methods so this is how you can create a swamp plot basis on two categorical and one numerical variable now here if you see male and female are combined in each of the payment method what if you want to see male and female separately for credit card same for these remaining two payment methods how can you do that let's try to do that here i will just insert another cell and to save the time i'm just going to use copy and now what i'll do is i'll use split argument split equals to true it accepts the boolean value right now let's execute this you can ignore this information for now we will see that later on and if you see over here for credit card we have male and female and same goes with remaining two payment methods let's do some sort of styling with swamp plot here it says styling a swamp plot change the marker size color age etc i'll just put that I mean I will use the same syntax which I copied above right so this is this is what we are going to use over here right so let's try to execute this then we will keep on changing these things one by one here I'm just not using the split method so that it I could keep it lighter now here we have this let me just make it more simple I will just remove one more categorical variable to keep it simple and quick okay now here it says change the marker here it says change the marker then size then color and then age color let me show you the marker the marker shape over here that is circular i mean it's circle what if i want to make it a star how can you do that for that you just need to say marker equals to in quotes you can put star similarly you can use whatever shape you want to use now if you see these all are stars in the same manner you can use whatever you want now let's see what next it says it says change the marker and then size let me just change the size of markers let's say three and this is going to make the marker size like this let me make it a little bigger let's say 10 let's see what happens now here we have the much 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 bigger markers now if you i agree you can see the overlap over here which is not acceptable in swamp plot but for that you just need to change the figure size if you change the figure size that will be adjusted let's try that for that you can use plt dot figure and in that you can say fix size and in that you can pass the dimension of the figure something like this now you see you have lesser overlaps you can the more you make it wider the less you would have the overlap so this is how you can change the shape of shape and size of markers in a swamp plot now it says change the color of markers so how can you do that for that you just need to say color and in that you can pass on the color let's say black so this will make all of these three swamp plots in black color only next it says change the age color so i will just remove this color or maybe we can just say green okay let's say green so here we have all the swamps in green color 
now it is asking us to change the age color for each of the for each of the points in swamp plot it is asking us to change the age color so let's do that though it won't be visible very clearly but still that's changed the color of each of the points age let me move this marker from here so that it could be little meaningful all right so here it has create uh, it has changed the color of age for each of the dots though that is not very much clear over here but it has changed next thing it says okay that's it the, this all were the styling we wanted to do in swamp plot now next point is here it says overlay this with box plot so let me again copy the same syntax here i have this syntax i will just remove this hue parameter and you don't need to do much just use the same syntax just before this are here in state of some plot you can say box plot and let's run this now if you see the swamp plot has been created on top of a box plot but both of these two plots are in same color then it's not looking pretty good so what you can do is you can change the color over here in swamp plot let's say it black now you're going to have exactly same diagram as we saw in the example in the very beginning this is how you can overlay a box plot with a swamp plot i mean a swamp plot on a box plot now let's do the same thing on violin plot let's try to do the same stuff on violin plot here we have this swamp plot syntax and here i will use the same syntax but this time i will just change swamp plot with violin plot let's run this here we have again same problem now what we can do is we will just change its color this time let's make it white here we go now we have the white swamp plot overlaying on the violin plots now if you see in violin plots we always have a box so if you see box is visible over there but that's not clear so that is not making any sense you can remove that box as well from violin plot you can just remove that box how can you do that for that you just need to say inner and here you're just gonna say none let's run this now let's again try to see you can't see any box behind this swamp plot you can change the width of a uh, violin plot in here but this is over uh, overlapping each other and not making much sense so you can keep that same and you can change the width of the figure size you can change the figure size now this still looks much better than what we have in the beginning right so you can uh, you uh, we just widen the violin plot to fit the swarm in each of the violin so this is how you can use the swarm plot for effective visualization and show the each of the data point on a I just hope that uh, we, I was able to clarify the doubts on swamp plot in this video. Just in case if you have any other doubts or any question or if you want to provide any feedback, do not hesitate to put that into the comment section. We will definitely try to get back to you. And until then, happy learning. Good luck.